Hi, I'm Liz Noble and I'm a qualified naturopath and author of the ebook Nature's Amazing Mononucleosis Cures. Now the Epstein-Barr virus is a virus which can cause the condition called mononucleosis or mono for short, um, also called glandular fever. Now Epstein-Barr is a virus which is a latent virus which means once you've had the virus it can remain in the body for life and can cause recurrent symptoms uh, longer term. Uh, in most patients Epstein-Barr is only an acute virus for a couple of weeks to maybe a month or so. Most people get over it and that's the end of it. Um, but a few people tend to suffer recurrent symptoms which can last from weeks to months to even years uh, in serious cases. So CFS can be triggered by Epstein-Barr. Epstein-Barr uh, is an immune virus so it affects your immune system and when I see patients who have had Epstein-Barr for more than six months we start to look um, at further details to see if they have perhaps got chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, it's very important to make sure you get your tests done to eliminate other conditions, conditions like you know, underactive thyroid gland, um, exhausted adrenal glands, anemia, um, Crohn's disease or gut disorders, um, allergies, all these things can actually mimic CFS. So it's very important to get all the screening and the tests done to make sure you haven't got a simple explanation for your condition. Now CFS is determined by a few criteria. The first one is relapsing fatigue, which has been with you for at least six months. Now this fatigue um, is not alleviated by rest or, or sleep. So you might find you go to bed, you get a good eight or 10 hours sleep, but you wake up feeling tired again the next day. Um, the second um, thing with the fatigue is that um, it's not actually, when you exercise, you find that the malaise stays with you for another 24 hours or so. So when you go, go for a walk or a jog or a swim, you might find it takes you longer to recover than it normally would. Also with fatigue, it's of a definite um, onset. You haven't had it all your life. It's something which has happened. There's a distinct starting point to that fatigue. Um, now, apart from the fatigue, we also say you need to have four other criteria which um, are present to be diagnosed with CFS. And these criteria are um, a recurrent sore throat um, or swollen glands, uh, muscle pain, headaches, uh, unrefreshing sleep, and impaired uh, short-term memory loss or, or poor concentration. So the fatigue plus four of those criteria can mean that yes, you, you perhaps do have um, CFS or chronic fatigue syndrome. Now it's definitely worth getting on your side a good doctor or naturopath who can help to monitor your symptoms and to guide you through some treatment options. Um, there's no standard conventional treatment for CFS, there's no magic pill that you can take unfortunately, um, but natural therapies seem to be the best approach in treating uh, CFS. So we do say in, uh, with my patients, um, priority is rest in the body, getting adequate sleep, so 8 to 10 hours of sleep a night. Um, some CFS patients do find they can't sleep well at night. They have um, chronic muscle aches or pains. They have headaches. They have nausea. So sleeping doesn't come easily to them. Um, in these cases, I do say um, perhaps take some B vitamins and some magnesium to help your adrenal glands to help you sleep better. Chamomile teas are good before you go to bed at night. Um, Epsom salt bars can help to relax your body. Um, Epsom salts are very high in magnesium and the magnesium again is a muscle relaxant. So if you are in, in pain with muscle aches and pains, Epsom salt bars are really good for you before you go to bed at night time. Um, there's some sleep herbs also that you can perhaps try, valerian, hops, skull cap are all good options for you. But this sleep, you know, it really is important to get your eight hours of deep sleep a night. Uh, it's when your body makes a hormone called growth hormone, which is your body's repair hormone. So it's very important to get this hormone produced when you're recovering from, um, from chronic fatigue. Eating well is important. Um, please throw out the junk food, the sugar, the coffee, the tea, um, the alcohol, soft drinks, all those things are going to make your recovery a lot, a lot harder. Uh, focus on your fresh fruit and vegetables, um, protein foods like you know, lean red meats and organic chicken, free range eggs, cheese, uh, nuts, seeds, legumes, protein powders are all good choices for you here. Um, and also your essential fats, so avocados, 
nuts, seeds, fish oils, uh, flaxseed oil are all good options again to help your immune cells uh, with these correct fats. Drinking enough water is important too. Eight, you know, eight to ten to twelve glasses of fluid a day um, is important uh, for your recovery. Um, and of course, trying to avoid stress as best you can. Please don't try and push through your symptoms. You're going to find you, you know, you'll take longer to recover if you do push yourself too hard. Now, all these therapies are discussed in my ebook on Epstein Barr. And it's a good starting point uh, towards your recovery. Um, I've had many patients who have come to me who have almost been bedridden with CFS and they've turned their life around and they're back to a healthy, happy, productive life again. So there is hope for you. Um, it's a tough condition to have. A lot of people don't understand it and uh, you do need the right advice and right direction to get over it totally. I hope this has helped you. It's just meant to be information. If you have further questions, um, please see your doctor uh, for further advice.